okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> My therapist is out. Sucking your teeth not to laugh is the same thing as laughing. Welcome to My Therapist is Out, an open space therapy collective podcast. We are your hub for queer and trans mental health care. Each episode, we'll speak with one of our therapists or collective members and chat about a mental health topic using a queer lens. And I am your host, Renee Johnson, licensed professional clinical counselor, art therapist, and founder of Open Space Therapy Collective. Today, we're chatting with Debbie White. Debbie White is an art therapist and has practiced in New York and California. Debbie specializes in working with teens and parents who want to support them. Oh, God, did you get that? Oh, Uh, that cough? Okay. Okay. Okay, ready? Um, So, welcome to... My therapist is out. Yeah, why don't you do the intro this time? I don't know. Do you want me to say that? Yeah, Am I... and, and introduce yourself, and you can introduce me. Oh, mm. yeah. okay. Hey, welcome to My Therapist is Out. I'm Debbie, and this is Renee. Hi, we are a Open Space Therapy Collective podcast, and Debbie and I are both therapists at the collective. Yep. And today we are going to be talking about art therapy. Um, we are both art therapists. Yep. And Debbie especially specializes in all things art therapy. Um, so we are going to ask Debbie some questions so you can learn a little bit more about what it is. Maybe I'll learn something too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. just to get us started, what is art therapy? Mm, loaded question. <laughs> art therapy is definitely a modality that um, psychotherapists use uh, to help people express themselves safely on paper, um, to just reduce their stress levels. Uh, Sometimes we give directives, instructions, and see what comes out of it. And then, you know, you just process Mm -hmm. the art Mm -hmm. and metaphorically what it means to you. And uh, it's fun. And it's not as scary as everyone thinks it is. Yeah. 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 When you say put it out on paper, mm-hmm. um, does that mean somebody has to be an artist? Nope. Nope. No art requirement necessary. Um, I've heard a lot of that. Oh, no, I'm not an artist. I'm not creative at all. And I'm like, uh, will you just give me two, maybe five minutes and uh, be open to it? And sure enough. All of a sudden, maybe by the third session, oh, I'm so creative, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think people just need to be encouraged. Unfortunately, art is one of those things that if you were criticized at a young age, especially by an art teacher or someone you revered as like just someone you highly respect, the moment they question or they're like, oh, what is that? Or I thought that was a dog. No, it's a cat. You know, like. The moment they have that, that stays with you. Mm -hmm. And then as an adult, you're just like, you're stunted at that age Mm -hmm. um, of where you think your art skills are. And then as an adult, you're like, well, it's embarrassing. Look at my two-year-old or my second grade style art. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I like to focus on how you felt creating the art Mm -hmm. more than what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, what it looks like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just an element that you're using. As I said, it's just paper. It's just art materials. We're just using it to express ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of the other, like to go along with that, is the a message, that we, especially in the States, is, oh, art's for kids. Creating's for kids. Oh, art yeah. therapy. Oh, you must work with kids. Oh, yeah. Um, like, you remember in grad school and they were like, be cautious of, of giving the geriatric community, the elder community, crayons because they will be insulted. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how wrong that is Mm -hmm. (laughs) because all the elderly patients I ever worked with, they were like, oh, I like crayons or color pencils. That's their norm. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily go for markers. Yeah, Yeah, but it's also really, can be really soothing Mm -hmm. to use the same like art materials you used as a kid. Yep. Um, and if like you're stressed about it, using your non-dominant hand and a marker that, or a crayon that you know there's no way it can look good, can really help relax some of that anxiety. And also, thanks to coloring sheets, 
-hmm. I also utilize that. If someone really feels stressed out about a blank piece of paper and you're asking them to create art, mm -hmm. I will give them like a circle on a piece of paper with maybe a couple of lines and get them to finish it. Mm -hmm. And then and it, it's, uh, explain to them that it's a mandala mm -hmm. or mandala, as everyone says, but the pronunciation in Sanskrit, it's mandala. Um, it's amazing what comes out of that process. And then coloring sheets. I always tell people it doesn't matter if you go to the dollar store and get like a coloring book that, you know, cute animals, whatever, that transcend an age. Mm -hmm. um, it's about just preoccupying your time, reducing your stress levels, and just doing, focusing on a task mm -hmm. and, and being like having a healthy distraction from whatever life challenges are facing you. Mm -hmm. um, real life experience i was working in, in an inpatient psych unit and uh, the nurses came in and was basically saying hey this patient's blood pressure has been high for the last two days and we've tried everything can get it um, they're willing to come into art can you help sure and i had heard in grad school how yeah just looking at art for 15 minutes can reduce your stress level so i was like this patient stayed in my group for 40 minutes had a coloring sheet, used markers, and when they came back and checked his vitals, it went down. Mm -hmm. Now he's like the first one <laughs> in group after that because he said he felt so much better. Mm -hmm. And to me, that just solidified me as an art therapist, what it felt for me to be like actually witnessing this. Yeah, you read case studies in school and everything, but when you witness it firsthand, you're like, holy cow, mm -hmm. it does work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, and those times where you get like the medical proof of like, oh, this blood pressure actually dropped yeah. is always really, I mean, on our end is very validating. Yeah, it connects the science mm -hmm. behind art therapy, which mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize there is science mm -hmm. behind it. Uh, I'm not going to bore you in that. <laughs> so um, there's a difference between using like coloring sheets at home to like help drop blood pressure and focus and mm -hmm. all of those things, which are wonderful. Right. And, and we call that the therapeutic, right? It's art as therapeutic. That's yes. A, yes. Is that where you're going with I'm it? I'm going with it. <laughs> um, so how is that different than sitting in a room with you and using art therapy during a therapy session? Okay. So, um... I guess the best way to explain that, because I, when I do my sessions, I like to keep it open-ended. Mm -hmm. I don't like to, I don't want to feed the client with an outcome. Mm -hmm. I kind of like try to give minimal instruction, ask them if it's clear enough, if they have any questions, if I give a directive. Mm -hmm. um, an art directive is basically an instruction like, um, I may say, draw what, um, depression looks like to you mm -hmm. and they may be like okay that's enough ins instructions sometimes I get well, what do you need mm -hmm. and then I'll be like well you know you can draw image um, emojis when I work with adolescents I kind of throw out the emojis because sometimes that's their comfort zone um, I said or you could choose colors uh, to represent what color depression is mm -hmm. for you um, or a scene or something that reminds you that closely connects to what it feels like for you. Mm -hmm. um, and usually they're like, okay, but if they have any more questions, I just kind of like ask them to think about something and whatever they share with me, then I'll kind of give them a little more. Mm -hmm. um, and then after they do the work, sometimes they talk while they do it. Otherwise I give them space to create and then we process together. Mm -hmm. I ask them, what is their art telling me? What, what does depression look like to you? Tell me what, about, what it is. And then they'll explain it in detail. Um, I had a, a client that didn't really do art and discovered that he loves abstract art. Mm -hmm. He likes doing shapes and colors and stuff like that. So his depression was more of the dark colors, like a yin yang. The best way I can describe it, the whole square of the paper was in half, and one was like really, really dark, and the other one was like gray. And he just, it was amazing. I wish I could really illustrate it, but it he felt better to be able to process 
what depression looked like to him and he was able to identify what the triggers were, when it comes up for him, and that helps him manage it. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference with an art therapist. You are talking with me or us, like what the process is, what's coming out for it, as opposed to, I'm just gonna do art because I really don't wanna think about anything today. I had a rough day at work or I had traffic was to hell or the kids are bothering me. I just want a little moment to myself, put on some music and you're coloring. That's more of a therapeutic act. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you, it's a great way to illustrate that. And I love this client who's got his yin yang. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that really relates to a lot of how we feel mm -hmm. about when depression shows up and not. Mm -hmm. um, what do you notice, especially when somebody's doing art therapy for the first few sessions, when they're like, oh, I don't know about this. And then they get something down and you start asking them questions. What do you notice about how they're responding to having that depression out on the paper, how they're talking about it, how they're feeling about it. It can be very powerful. It can be aha powerful to whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it could go from, hey, I never thought about it like that. Um, oh, wow. Uh, what people don't realize is your subconscious comes through your art. Mm -hmm. And so it could be things that you've thought about but couldn't put into words. Mm -hmm. Um, and doing the art helped you put it into words. Mm -hmm. So I usually don't ask a whole lot of questions. I really watch body language, how the person is receiving what's coming in for them because you don't want to overwhelm them. This is something that just became a, a profound thing. So mm -hmm. it's okay to process it slowly mm -hmm. and just talk about the thing that is most obvious. Mm -hmm. So. I do a lot of body language, watching, tone of voice, um, noticing when there's a shift. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not fortune tellers. We just know <laughs> when to ask questions and maybe what questions. But people think we're fortune tellers because we know what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. So I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you're spot on with like that subconscious and those things that we don't quite have words for yet or mm -hmm. feel like are just out of our reach like giving yourself some time and space to just use some colors and some materials to put mm -hmm. it out on paper. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you are looking at what your subconscious is telling you. Yeah. And oh, holy shit, those words are now here. Yeah. I think the one that stayed with me the most was last year. I There was an adolescent that I was working with that liked art but it wasn't feeling fulfilled mm -hmm. by art and i but had a lot of anger rightfully so um she, she was sexually assaulted trigger warning sorry um from age six by family members and she had a lot of anger mm -hmm. and didn't know where to put it because now she's 16 and doesn't know where her future is and gave her some all pastels mm -hmm. <sighs> the next eight weeks it was amazing to see her just put all of it out on paper. And and she was just like, thank you. I am going to buy me a pack of oil pastels because <laughs> she really took to that material. And then I, I explained to her that oil pastel is a great material to get the energy out. Mm -hmm. If you're angry, you're anxious, the rubbing of it, of uh, the material on paper, it generates heat in your body, increases your your endorphins and the dopamines and serotonin, like they all kick in and your mood will shift mm -hmm. and you'll feel accomplished and she believed me we had a great rapport she trusted me and this is someone who didn't have trust right and it was just beautiful to see by the time eight weeks i think 10 weeks later and she was ready to face her now future of going into foster care uh and and uh not being around her family her entire family did her wrong so she couldn't go back there and so for her to make this transition i think that stayed with me um yeah that was powerful so, i mean there's been a lot of cases mm -hmm. but that one has been with me the most since last year because i'm working with uh, adolescents as well and it's just um good to see when they make a transformation yeah yeah so it's, 
Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> That's okay. Those are those. Um, I think the one of the things about our what we do for our career is um, really special, and it takes a lot of trust in other people mm-hmm. to sit with us and do these things. And it is a huge honor. I know for you and for me mm-hmm. um, to be able to be there for people when they are yeah. going through these huge transformations. Yeah. Um, especially when they're putting it out on paper like that. Yeah. And and I think what brings me, you're probably going to ask this question, but I think the challenge of being an art therapist is not knowing what happens after a client leaves you. Mm-hmm. Like we have to train ourselves not even to be curious. Mm-hmm. Like I just wish her the best and I leave it at that but I do often think about I wonder where the kid is I'm yeah. human yeah yeah but I think that's the hardest part of totally. yeah <laughs> of our like you see their growth and mm-hmm. you're kind of like okay fly yeah. bird fly yeah. <laughs> those moments of like when I'm ending sessions with a client it's like this is the bittersweet part of the time together because like, you go to you go to care so much about this person mm-hmm. and their progress but you, they don't need you anymore. Your time with them is done and you need to. Yeah. And it's the go. only healthy way to be a therapist. Mm-hmm. I think I, I think you and I have the same belief that we are not going to be therapists forever for this client. We're hoping to help them get stable to where they feel that they can manage. If they want to get back and uh, check in, mm-hmm. that's different, but it's nice to be able to help someone grow and get to where they're going. Talked about a lot of the ways that art therapy can help. What mm-hmm. are some of the challenges? What are some of the challenges that you face, or the challenges a client might face if they're wanting to use art therapy as they process what's happening? Um, <clears throat> I've been fortunate that once a client says they want to do art therapy that they continue. Um, The challenges I'll face at the very beginning is someone is not open to art. And then I let them know, well, we can talk. Mm -hmm. We can talk. It doesn't have to be art if you're not. And I always let them know, if art is not your jam, we can find other things. Mm -hmm. I have uh, played board games, (laughs) (laughs) Um, tic-tac-toe, dots, Mm -hmm. um, you know. or just sit here and talk like how you and I are talking right now. Maybe not this close, but, you know. <laughs> um, the, the challenges present themselves early on. Mm-hmm. Um, the other challenge, like I shared, is we need the bittersweet. You have to say goodbye when they've reached their goals. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the client, uh, I can see when challenges come up for them would be when they're making a breakthrough mm. and it might be too scary. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes uh, like a wall mm-hmm. or resistance or cancel appointments because they're not ready to go to the next mm-hmm. level. And so the challenge is how do you as a therapist help this client, reassure them that they're on the right path and help them get past that wall to continue Mm -hmm. um that's always been a challenge so i kind of like anticipate when it might happen Mm -hmm. and i always will remind them that change is messy and muddy and it's not gonna feel good Mm -hmm. because it's y'all know Mm -hmm. and it's gonna bring up a lot of fear and a lot of emotions i don't try to name them because I want them to attach their emotion, not me feeding it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do let them know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. And we just take a break and you rest and don't quit because you have a goal that you want to meet and I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. Um, But then there's sometimes when they just literally will ghost you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you just have to be like, okay, they're just not ready. And, And people have to recognize when they're ready to face something or because if you do it, and you're not ready, and you're doing it because other people are telling you to do it, the chances of you sticking with the change is not yeah. good. Yeah. Sorry. Slim. Yeah. And like you were saying earlier, when the subconscious can put something out on paper, it can be really confronting and really mm-hmm. jarring. Mm-hmm. And sometimes 
you're just at the place where like, okay, I saw it, I need to step away before I yeah. come back. I think whether you're in therapy or not, I think any human being, it's hard for you to look yourself in the mirror, mm -hmm. ask yourself tough questions mm -hmm. and answer them. Mm -hmm. Looking yourself in the mirror. I know it was hard for me. Mm -hmm. And if you could do that, that's great. You, you're ready for therapy and you're ready to focus on your goals. But if you can't, then you need to approach it in baby steps. Yeah. 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 And there's nothing wrong with you can't, mm -hmm. but being very slow as you do it. Slow as you do it. Um, so it doesn't feel like that boundary cross mm -hmm. or that forced process. Or feeling too vulnerable mm -hmm. because if you, um, if you speak before you're ready and then you start feeling vulnerable, oh my gosh, it can really shut you down. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't like therapy. <laughs> Doesn't feel good. It's very scary. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it might be a decade before you try it again. Right. But, um, yeah, to me, it's all about meeting yourself where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, put. yeah. Um, <laughs> What what are we missing? I feel like we've we've kind of got around the edges, and there's a lot of directions see. we can go. Um, who needs therapy? Oi. No. Uh, a little bit of my background. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk about you. Oh, great. <laughs> who who is Debbie White, art therapist? Oh my god, let me tell you. <laughs> Um, so I came into therapy later in my life, mm -hmm. even though I'm still 25. Um, <laughs> I spent 20 years doing the whole entertainment, like working as an actress, tried comedy, improv. Then I ended up working in corporate America for a cable company, and you might know of it, Nickelodeon, TV Land, Nick at Night. Um, and I spent almost 20 years there. And... I was, I went up from an assistant to project manager and, and that's when I really realized I no longer desire, <laughs> I don't care about ratings. Mm -hmm. I sure enough don't care about Hollywood. I'm the most jaded person there is. Don't talk to me about celebrities. <laughs> um, and I decided I wanted to go back to my first love. As a kid, I was that kid that all the kids came up to and asked for advice. It's kind of like Lucy from Charlie Brown, but not the mean side, only when she was the therapist for five, the psychiatrist mm -hmm. for five cents. <laughs> um, and I've always wanted to help people. And I was always that kid that was curious about why people do the things that they do. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through life, like teachers said, what do you want to be? And I'm like, I'm going to be an actress, a therapist, an um, interior designer, architect, and a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think I've done all of them. <laughs> um, and then I went back to school and finished up my associates in graphic design. And I got my bachelor's in psychology. And I literally Googled, because back then it was try to stump Google. You mm -hmm. know, when Google first was like mm -hmm. dating myself. Okay, never mind. Uh, so I would do art plus psychology. And art therapy popped up. And I read the description and I was like, oh, that's cool. And it's at. Uh, college that I've always wanted to go to mm -hmm. when I wanted to be an architect, but then I realized it's too much math and that's not my thing. So it was Pratt Institute, the only place I applied to. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought I was crazy. And I got in mm -hmm. and I met you. <laughs> and it's been awesome. Yes. Yeah. So that's how I got into art therapy. It's after working 20 years in corporate America really making good money. It wasn't about money, right? It's like, I want to help people and I want, if I'm going to do a profession, I want to feel good about it. Mm -hmm. And I no longer felt good about working in entertainment. Yes, I still plan to do my acting. I wrote a play. I still plan to do all these things. I Stage is my first love. Um, even thinking about getting certified as a drama therapist. But, you know, all of this plays a role as an art therapist. Mm -hmm. And the, I'm in a profession that encourage us to do our own art what <laughs> so it's a win-win i can help people and i can help myself and do art so that's how i became an art therapist yeah yeah 
one of the things, like as you're talking, I think one of the things, especially being LA based, mm -hmm. um, is there are a lot of artists here. Mm -hmm. And as an artist yourself, and now as an art therapist, um, well, as a long time art therapist, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> one thing that I think is really true is that artists think differently. Mm -hmm. Um, and art therapy can really lend itself to the artist's mindset and the way that artist processes things, mm. even if it's not visual art, if it's writing yes. or it's acting. Yes. And I'm glad you said that because even though before I came to this profession, my mind was like jaded about Hollywood and everything, I also see the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so it was jaded with the corporate production side, not so much the people side of being in the industry. So I feel like, yeah, I could definitely help an artist develop their voice, um, anyone. You don't have to be an actress or artist of any kind. I do utilize poetry. If writing is more your jam, we'll do that. Um, I, like I said, my main thing is meeting you where you are mm -hmm. and do no harm. Mm -hmm. So it's about development mm -hmm. if as we wrap up mm -hmm. if there was one takeaway somebody's thinking about art therapy but like I don't know how to use this if it's really for me what would be the one takeaway that you'd want them to sit with as they think about that mm -hmm. good question I can only speak for myself mm -hmm. and I know well, you probably feel the same way that we are open to whether you want to explore therapy using art mm -hmm. or if you just want the traditional talk therapy, although we still aren't traditional therapists. Mm -hmm. So I would say check with yourself to see if you are ready to face whatever life challenges you've been struggling with. If you... Um, feel that you are, then being open-minded to meet with an art therapist um, or even a dance movement therapist. I mean, we have different modalities of, of therapy that we can approach. Um, I would say if you're looking for a non-traditional approach or a therapist that doesn't necessarily think the traditional psychological <laughs> blame everything on your mom kind of <laughs> therapy. Um, I mean, that's okay if you want to, but um, if you want a non-traditional therapist approach to therapy, then I would say give art therapy a try because it's open. You can talk or you can do art or you don't ever have to do art. Mm -hmm. You just do the art that you use that speaks to you. It mm -hmm. could be music, poetry, writing. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah. You get what I mean? Use okay. your, your, your creativity. Creativity. Yeah. Express yourself. <laughs> awesome. Well put. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we will have Debbie back for many more um, and hear all about her and her approach to art therapy and other therapies as we continue on. There you go. Your thank therapist you. is out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. Leave a comment below or email us at communications at Open Space Therapy Collective. You can follow us on all of the social medias. And if you're in California looking for a therapist, visit our website at openspacetherapycollective.com and book a free intro call with one of our therapists to see if we are the right fit for you. My Therapist is Out is an Open Space Therapy Collective podcast. Our therapists are Kristen Crow, Debbie White, and Renee Johnson. Our marketing and communications coordinator is Riley Andreessen. Marketing confidence cheerleader, Issa Gauchi. Our admin assistant is Maritza Rose. Operations and clinical consultant, Jenny Nigro.